When you're unhappy with your cooking results, maybe it's not your fault. Maybe it's your tongue's fault. And we're going to learn how to train your tongue to improve your cooking today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Oh yeah, it's on again. It's another Tuesday. And welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. I know I get very excited, uh, but this is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, the insights into better food and cooking. And we're live, of course, every Tuesday at noon Eastern. If you're looking for some of the past videos, you can find not all of them, but most of them on facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. And when we're not cooking live to get to, uh, together, I'm still uh, posting photos on Instagram. If you go to instagram.com slash chef Todd Moore, uh, did you miss the Coco Van? On uh, Saturday, I made this very complicated dish, I think, look very easy, and it was delicious. How do I do these things? Well, it's because I'm a carefree cook, really. Um, let me see. Uh, I create my own recipes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and it brings my friends and family together. That seems to happen. Um, I wind up learning every time I cook because I create my own cooking style by practicing pro methods, and I wind up loving my cooking. That's how that goes. So... All right, so here's what I get more than anything else. What goes with what? It just It's always thrown at me. Does this go with that? And go, I, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know what go necessarily means. Chef Todd, please tell me what goes with chicken. What, what goes with rosemary? What goes with tarragon? You know, anytime your brain is asking what goes with what, you're, you're really asking your tongue. You know, your, your brain thinks it's the head of this whole food tasting thing, but it's not. The tongue is really the head of what goes with what. That's the way to figure it out. The brain can't figure out what tastes good without the tongue or the nose for that matter. And come to think of it, when, when it comes to your cooking and figuring out what flavors you like, or repairing a dish that, you know, kind of doesn't taste right, the brain is not as smart as the tongue and the nose is. And that's what we're going to talk about today because this idea of fixing something that went wrong is a tremendous skill in the kitchen. It's too salty. It's too sour. Um, as well as recently, I understand people have impaired senses of smell, and I'm hoping what I share with you today will help you repair some of that. But first, I've got the what am I for you. Every Tuesday, we play a true or false or a what am I. This is a photograph magnified 90 times, it says on the bottom. 90 times magnifying. Tell me in the comment section below, what am I? Okay, so one of the main reasons that I always look forward to Tuesdays at noon because I feel like it's my opportunity to give back. I, you know, I take this so seriously. You notice I don't cancel classes. I've, out, of a hun out of two years, th two plus, two and a half years, I think I've canceled one because I didn't have internet access. I was on a beach somewhere, you know? So I take this very seriously because it's my opportunity to pay back. And, and you know I was just like you, right? I mean, we, we started from the same exact spot. I was a frustrated home cook who really liked to cook, but I never knew what I was doing. I, I, honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. I could repeat a few recipes, like I could repeat a few words in French, you know, or I, like I could play chopsticks on the piano. Some things you don't have a talent for, but 
you can do a few of it. You know what I mean? I don't really speak French. I, I don't play the piano, but I could give you a little taste of both of those every once in a while. I could fake it. I, I, I could pretend I knew enough, you know, to be dangerous. I mean, I speak French like Pepe Le Pew, you know. Oh, ma chérie, come with me to the casbah. That cartoon hasn't aged very well, has it? Hashtag me too, Pepe. Lay off, you know. Well, that's where my cooking was 25 years ago. I, I was faking it. I was cooking like I knew what I was doing, but I really didn't know what I was doing. I was speaking French like Pepe Le Pew, like a cartoon. I mean, it was all fun to do, but the results were generally disappointing and things would go wrong and I would never know how to fix it. Well, <laughs> I think you all know what happened from there. I, I took some extreme measures, um, honestly became quite obsessed uh, and still am <laughs> 20 years later. I'm still obsessed with trying to figure out how cooking works and then sharing it with you. I've been obsessed for 26 years. You know what else I've been obsessed with for 26 years? Her. <laughs> it's the same amount of time that Heather and I have been together and she's my greatest obsession because I wish someone had shared all of these things with me. I wish someone had learned them ahead of time and gave them to me when I was so frustrated by it all. But you know, one of the biggest things that I didn't understand and I didn't learn was what goes with what. <clears throat> this whole idea is how do you figure out what goes with what as if it's a lock and key, as if one thing goes with another thing. You know, what I found <laughs> was that there's no perfection. There's no perfect combination of spices, of ingredients, of herbs, this magical potion that if you put it on your food, everything is going to be fine. I mean, you can't just put Old Bay hot sauce on everything and call it a masterpiece. I, I wish that were true. That's what I would do. Add some Old Bay hot sauce. It's perfect, but not perfect for everybody because this ignores the methods. And if you ignore the methods, you know it's a disaster about to happen. Methods always come first. How you cook the item, how you caramelize sugars, how you retain moisture, how you add flavor, all these things come with how you control the heat. It's cooking methods. How you do it comes first, okay? So the most important thing is the natural flavor of your dish. But then how do you fix a dish that doesn't taste quite the way that you thought it would. The secret is right on your tongue. And now Western culture, yeah, <laughs> oh my, uh, West, Western, Western culture says that there are four tastes on your palate. Now your palate, it's not just your tongue. Your palate is actually the roof of your mouth, the upper surface, the surface, the nasal cavity, every, everything that separates your oral and nasal cavity, you actually, you, you, you don't taste anything on the roof of your mouth necessarily. The receptors for taste are found on your tongue. But, but the word palate sounds so much faster, so much sexier, you know, so, so much better than nasal cavity. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cook for a very sensitive nasal cavity. No, no, no. Palate sounds much more <laughs> descriptive. Palate is a more descriptive term. And we say things like a person with an expensive palate. Well, they only like really high priced culinary treats, right? Nothing but caviar, lobster, and steak tartare. Someone who tastes um, like slight nuances in food is, is said to have a well-developed palate. And somebody who likes only fancy food is, is said to have a sophisticated palate. But this is such an overgeneralization. If you're talking about your palate, you're, you're making this grand generalization, a judgment about yourself and or the food that you choose to eat. And I'm, I'm really not as concerned with your self-descriptor as your pa of your palate which is really the nose, the, it all goes into it. But what I want to know is how you perceive the different flavors in cooking, the different flavors in food. And we can call it a palate if you want, if that makes you feel better. But I want you to talk about your tongue. I want you to talk about what goes on there. So 
we trace this whole idea of definable and categorizable senses in the mouth way back to Aristotle. This goes back before Julia Child. This goes to 350 BC. And Aristotle wrote about sweet, bitter, succulent, salt, pungent, harsh, puckery, I like puckery, puckery and sour as the basics. But then the ancient Chinese brought these ideas down to just five elements, bitter, salty, sour, sweet, and spicy. Then the Japanese add umami, which is like meatiness or savoriness. And many other cultures add a description of taste that's appropriate or needed in their particular culture. If you have a very specific flavor, you're going to need a word to describe it. And so the idea being, you need to be able to recognize these things, how they are perceived by you because they're perceived differently by everybody else. But training the tongue is getting into these categories and being able to taste them not only singularly, which I'm going to show you in a minute. I've got some lettuce and coffee beans. I've got a lemon and sugar and salt. You're going to, you're going to see me make faces probably in a few minutes. But the thing I want you to leave with today is training your tongue is understanding these senses. And for so many years, books on the physiology of the human taste always contain these diagrams, right? They just, they were wrong, you know? And it's so easy. This diagram of the tongue shows the levels of sensitivity of different tastes in different regions on the tongue. This is what you were taught as a kid, like the food pyramid, another lie, okay? So these are the lies we were taught to as children. They're just not true. And they are so easy to disprove because tastes are found all over the tongue. They're found in every area of the tongue. It's not in a popular map that everyone has seen, right? I mean, it's like saying that, that you only feel heat on your elbow, you know, not on, not on your fingers. You're, you're gonna feel heat everywhere. You, you have receptors all over your body. You have receptors all over your tongue. So I have two goals for us today in our time together. The first, is to disprove this whole tongue mapping thing. That's gonna take about 30 seconds. Then in the other 20, 19 minutes and 30 seconds I have, for the remaining time, I wanna show you how to actually train your tongue so you can make adjustments to your cooking that your brain doesn't ever really need to be involved in. And remember, it's your tongue that's gonna tell your brain what goes with what. And this is the reason I never answer this question People love to ask me this question and I don't answer it because it really is entirely personal. You need to figure out what goes with what for you. And once you figure that out, then you start to create new dishes based on those flavors. And the best thing and the thing we try and train chefs on in culinary school is how to fix the dish that doesn't taste right. It either went wrong or you have a different perception on your tongue, right? So you with me? You ready to keep, you ready to go? You want to see this experiment that I've been telling you about? I've been doing this in culinary school for years and years and years. You're with me? Good. And I want you to do the same thing because it's an awareness more than anything else. It's an awareness. Okay. So what I have here are some coffee beans in this little ramekin. Okay. Coffee bean. Eat or eat. Coffee bean. I've got some bitter lettuces in here as well. Um, I've got a lemon. I've got some sugar and uh, some salt in this ramekin, okay? So now, according to the tongue map, I'm only supposed to taste saltiness on the side of my tongue, all right? So let's do that. Let's get a little bit of salt in the ramekin, lick my finger, salt on the end of my finger. Let's put it on the middle back of my tongue. Yep, still salty. Okay, 30 seconds. I told you I could, dispel that. I could dispel that rumor with the salt directly on my tongue. We could spend more time <laughs> talking about this. Um, I could get us a lime, some salt, and some tequila, but it would make it a much difficult, <laughs> a much different class, and I guarantee the results are going to be different. You are going to taste sweet, sour, salty, bitter, no matter where you put that food item in your mouth. This whole 
tongue map thing is just a myth. So let's get over that. And the next challenge is actually training the tongue to recognize this mixed up everywhere thing on the four categories of taste. And that way, if you have too much of one, then you add another to counteract it. Okay, so this is the skill. And the first thing we need to do is tell the brain to convince the tongue that these four flavors are opposites. So the skill here is in balancing seesaw counter opposites. One counterbalances the other. And I learned this whole concept from my friend Pascal Mierve, uh, the spice store owner on the Rue Claire in Paris. Pascal blew my mind. He fed me these white peppercorns. He's like, oh, I have these new white peppercorns. See, Pepe Le Pew. I told you, right? So with all due respect to Pascal, I won't make fun of his accent because it's brilliant. Um, he has these new peppercorns from Madagascar. They were really bitter. He made me eat one. <coughs> Crunch down on it. Oh, a bitter pepper. And then he fed me a strawberry. And you just feel the one go away and the other come back. And that is when my tongue blew my brain's mind that day. And the whole thing is witnessed on my French Food Finds DVD and online course. If you can have that, go back. If you have it, go back. Go into the Epicure Fine Pascal shop. I learned more there. <laughs> Pascal, messing with my palate and my sense of taste, like, like a scientist, I learned more with Pascal than I did in my first year of culinary school. The, the guy is a taste master. So I'm inspired by Pascal. So let's start the tongue training thing again. All right, so let's do the salt. All right, salt on my tongue. Side, front, anywhere, okay, salty. Okay, salty. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now I'm with this taste of salt in my mouth, and this is the kind of stuff I want you to do. Like, feel it, embrace it. I'm gonna do it again, more salt, Mwah, there. Very salty in my mouth right now. So now I'm thinking about a dish I made that was too salty. Maybe I used a bouillon cube, right? Or a, or a condiment like, like soy sauce um, that's pretty salty, right? And I want to tone down the dish. How do I counteract salt? How do I, if I'm on a low salt diet, how do I take salt out of my diet but still get a little bit zip on my tongue? Let's add something bitter. To, oh, I'm sorry, bitter <laughs> to the dish, right? A lot of times you can accomplish this with herbs or bitter lettuces. Here's red radicchio. Um, get these scraggly greens. Coffee bean. Well, I'll save that for later. Well, I feel like a rabbit. <clears throat> and it's never a good idea to eat and try and talk. Okay, so now I've swallowed the bitter greens and what I had was a tremendously salty flavor in my mouth, but I added bitter and it went away. I'm like neutral right now. Okay, so let's go the other way in this. Here's a coffee bean. <laughs> mm, I happen to love really dark coffee, but that's a bit harsh. Mm. Okay. So, chewing on a coffee bean, very bitter in my mouth right now. How do I overact, uh, interact something that's bitter? You put too much tarragon in your dish. You put too much of a bitter herb, too much rosemary, something bitter in there. Then you're going to have to use something salty. It's unbelievable. The bitter the coffee bean that is still, the pieces of coffee bean are still in my mouth, but I no longer taste them. I taste the salt, all right? And then if I wanted, I could go back to herbs or leafy greens or something like that. It overcomes the saltiness. <clears throat> um, other things, turmeric, really good health quality benefits in turmeric. Fresh ginger, wasabi, uh, things like that are very bitter. You'll find in Asian cultures, it's all about the balance. They put very sour things with very sweet things, very salty things with very bitter things. So your tongue dances around. My uh, pork adobo 
dish that I did that's now part of the Dinner Done program. That's one of those things too, the vinegar with the sugar, it's incredible. So that's why so many Asian foods really are, are actually saltier than you're perceiving because of that balance. They hide all that MSG, all, all those bitter herbs and vegetables, right? They hide it. Chocolate is bitter. Uh, so you can use a cocoa mole, right? With something that would be salty. Uh, coffee beans are very bitter. Pardon, you don't need to have your salty dish taste like coffee. I mean, that's not the idea. The idea is to use just enough to trick your tongue. So now, if your, your taste is impaired in some way, do this, get some baselines, put some salt on your tongue and see how that feels to you. And you'll know how much salt to use in your food. Get something bitter like coffee or bitter greens or herbs and get a baseline, see how that feels to you. Because even a little dusting of coffee can, can change the perception of the tongue and train it to forget about that salty taste. If you're on a low salt diet, citrus is usually, uh, bitter things is usually the way to go. Things that are bitter and citrus will cover that as well. Let's move on to that. Speaking of which, let's say you're making a tomato sauce. Uh, let's say you're making a lemon scampi dish, something like that, something that is way too sour. Maybe your tomatoes are really acidic. Maybe you added too much lemon to your sauce. Maybe it makes you wince <laughs> a little bit when you taste it, right? One of those things. Maybe you didn't reduce your red wine enough in your sauce, a common mistake, uh, and so it's really, really bitter. So it's like licking a lemon, okay? <laughs> I told you, I told you you were going to see me make faces. Okay. That is really, really sour, right? And if you want to train your tongue to stop listening to a sour message, you need to interrupt that conversation. Tongue to mouth, tongue to mouth, really, uh, tongue to brain, tongue to brain, really sour, really sour. Well, let's get some sugar to overcome that. Sour and sugar. And it's like magic. It just, it just goes away. This is why grandma added sugar to her tomato sauce. This is why so many people put sugar in their tomato sauce. This is why grapefruit juice, cranberry juice, pomegranate juice, lime juice, they have to be sweetened. They're horribly sour otherwise. I mean, have you ever eaten raw cranberries? Oh, they're terrible. So if your tomato sauce is too sour, you add something sweet. But here's the thing. I, I would prefer that you add something naturally sweet instead of putting refined sugars in your sauces. How about adding some steamed or poached carrots, pureed carrots? Carrots are naturally sweet. You could add some honey to your sauce. Basil is sweet. Uh, bell peppers are sweet. Roasted garlic is sweet. These are naturally sweet ingredients that you reply with when your tongue tells you that something is too sour. You get the idea? Okay, so these are the four examples that I showed you today. Salt is salty. Lemon is sour. Coffee and bitter greens are bitter. And sugar is sweet. Now what I want you to do is go through your entire pantry, lick your finger, stick your finger in, <laughs> in it, and taste it and categorize these things. Okay, maybe not really. I don't, I don't want you to stick your finger in everything. But it's time for your tongue and your brain to start working together so they can repair any cooking gone wrong in the cabinet, in, 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 any cooking gone wrong in the future. So I want to ask you, what's in your cabinets? Look through your cabinets and either taste them if you're not sure or ask yourself, are they salty? Are they sweet? Are they bitter? Are they sour? Taste them if you have to. Your tastes and senses on the tongue are like the effects of colors for a painter. A painter wants you to see contrast in his or her art. You, you can't just play, paint a canvas blue and go, it's art. Right? There's a contrast. There's a depth to it. And a skilled cook wants you to taste the contrast within his or her art. And manipulating these flavors is the way to create something incredibly special or fix a dish that's gone terribly wrong. And, you know, many times those two to go, go together. It's really funny how often I fix something that's gone wrong and I wind up creating something new and amazing that I make in the future. 
That's why it's a journey, my friends. <laughs> it's an entire journey toward becoming truly free in the kitchen, cooking with confidence and pride, and always striving to be the most carefree cook that you can be. That's the idea. This is just another step that you have to take in your cooking when you start to think about the taste characteristics of the foods that you cook with. If your food is too salty, what's your go-to sweet or sour? If your item is too bitter, what is your go-to adding salt to it? Because only then can you possibly decide what goes with what. I don't answer that question. You do. That's the idea. So then I went to our Carefree Cooks community the private community for lifetime members of web cooking classes on Facebook. And I wanted to see who's putting some excitement on their tongue <laughs> this week. And actually, you know, it, it, you know, it's been the overriding tone in the Carefree Cooks community this year. They are going nuts for my Dinner Done program and they're getting a lot of creative ideas from there. So let me show, share a few of them with you. This is Alex. Alex knows how to play with opposite sides of his palate because he did a sauteed pork with pan-fried cinnamon and sugar-coated apple slices. Think about that. Imagine what that's like on the tongue. And then a sauce of apple cider vinegar accompanied with a garden salad that I'm sure has some bitter lettuces in there. So just think about that for a minute. Right on topic of what we're talking about today. Pork with cinnamon sugar apples with Sour apple cider vinegar, garden salad, really. Uh, he says, Alex says, the rating by my soul customer, absolutely delicious. All right, so count the senses here. Sweet apple, savory pork, sour vinegar, bitter greens, nicely done, happy tongue. Uh, Dan made a great short ribs dish this week, but this isn't it. <laughs> he forgot to take a photo of the original dish, but look what he did with the leftovers. This is a gorgeous stir fry of noodles with a lot of different flavor going on there. All kinds of ingredients and contrasts. Nice, 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 Dan. Nicely done. Happy tongue. Ooh, I think I'm on to something here. Uh, John is cooking for his queen again. It's a noble thing to do. Something we have in common, John. I like to cook for my queen as well. Uh, but check this dish out. He made zoodles out of zucchini, you know, spiral cut zucchini, but then he marinated them in lemon juice to give it a new flavor. What a great idea. Marinate the noodles in lemon juice. Then he served it with a really nicely seared piece of halibut, cherry tomatoes. This all makes a happy tongue. Nicely done. Ooh, it's catching on, I think. Uh, Laura, <laughs> Laura watched last Saturday's Coco Vin class, took something that you would think would be very complicated, and she made it look easy as well uh, and very tasty too. She made the substitutions that were right for her diet and desires, but duplicated the braising method. <laughs> Beef, tomatoes, mushrooms, sweet carrots, savory, umami, makes a happy tongue, nicely done. Oh, I'm rocking it now. Dan took my ideas from the new Dinner Done course, did it the way he wanted, said it turned out great. A blackberry balsamic vinegar reduction scallops watering mouth, uh, red pepper asparagus risotto. That is outrageous. Think about all of these different sensations on the tongue and the palate going on there. Blackberry balsamic vinegar, red pepper, creamy risotto. It has it all. Nicely done. Happy tongue. New phrase? <laughs> what do you think? New phrase in the works, new t-shirt, nicely done, happy tongue. Oh, please. Hey, look, by the way, everything I told you today is absolutely no good. The past 30 minutes has been totally wasted and is absolutely useless. If you're not tasting your food as you cook, this is the biggest mistake home cooks make. They don't taste their food. And if you're unsure, pour a little bit of that sauce into a ramekin and experiment and then taste it. Don't ruin the whole dish. But you should always be tasting and adjusting as you cook. Your, your tongue can't tell you what to do if it's sitting on the sidelines. Thought that would go without saying. Hey, speaking of which, what's this a magnified photo of? Of course, the tongue. This is the 
Top of your tongue magnified 90 times. These are your taste buds, as a matter of fact. Hey, look, if you know someone that doesn't know how to listen to their tongue and they don't know what they're cooking might be doing, if they did, uh, you should share this video with them. Give it a like. Give it some love. So maybe even a stranger that you don't know could benefit too. And you know, it's only a week old, but it's already one of the most popular courses that I've published since web cooking classes in 2009. It's dinner done. And it's bringing a supercharged amount of kitchen creativity to home cooks everywhere. And I'm just about finished. I'm just about to add that entire breakfast done course as a free bonus as well. If, if you were with me live on Sunday of this week, it was a rare Sunday live. You saw me change my mind in an instant. And instead of charging $199 for my new breakfast course, I decided to just give it away for free to everyone that has my dinner done course. It's 36 videos for endless dinner ideas where you copy what I do and then substitute the ingredients that are right for your diet or your desires. And now you get 10 more breakfast inspirations from all around the world and you get a free t-shirt too. I almost forgot about that. Uh, the Dinner Done t-shirt is free during this introductory period. I would hurry up and grab one for yourself right away. This offer does not last long. It is a limited time offer. So go to dinner getdinnerdone.com slash start. Getdinnerdone.com slash start. Hey, thanks for being with me again on a Tuesday, everyone. This is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. Bye, everyone.